There are people who are concerned about what came to be termed brain drain. Mainly, um, the concern started in the, 19, the late 1950s, early 1960s, when there was a noted trend in migration of scientists to developing countries. And opponents of brain drain at the time lamented this migration from developing countries to developed countries because they felt that it was a loss to the developing country, that they were losing their brightest citizens. Opposition on the U.S. side really stems from concerns about jobs and whether highly skilled and educated people are taking jobs that otherwise would be filled by U.S. citizens. As to the concern for, for brain drain from developing countries, to the extent that that rationale was ever persuasive in the past, it really has been changed a lot in recent years. Those rationales were first that someone couldn't contribute to their home country after they migrated, that there was a sort of unbridgeable gulf between the person and her home country after she left. And there's also a realization that people cannot make the same contribution if they're living in their home communities because they're not living among and working with similarly skilled individuals. That's why Silicon Valley is so effective because there's all these people working on similar issues in the same place. That creates an ecosystem that fosters innovation. And the same is true for pharmaceuticals and biotechnology. With changes in the internet and a globalized economy, it kind of, it, it throws those rationales into doubt, right? So people now can contribute to their home communities even after they migrate. There's knowledge transfers, there's monetary transfers in the form of direct foreign investment and remittances, and there's technology transfers. In fact, some contributions take place only because the person migrated. After migrating, they have access to technology or to uh, labs that they wouldn't have access to in their home country. Or after someone rises within a company and becomes in a, a management position, they have an opportunity, all else being equal, to make investments in their home country, to do outsourcing from their home country, or to import products from their home country, all of which, which wouldn't have been possible but for the fact that they migrated. So as to the concern for U.S. jobs, research establishes pretty clearly that migration of skilled and educated people leads to economic growth in the United States. In fact, a proponent of restricted immigration laws, Professor George Borges, a professor, uh, a labor, labor economist from Harvard, admits himself that migration of skilled and educated people actually improves and helps U.S. economic growth. For all of these reasons then, the best evidence is that we really need to reassess our limitations on uh, migration because it might be that they're not generally viable anymore in a new globalized internet world.